Greetings, anglers. Michael Shear with Fishing's Future. Today, you are doing your in-school angler education. You're rotating around on learning how to tie knots and rules and regulations, some casting. But we had to make some videos just in case an instructor could not be there in person. So today, in this rotation, you are going to learn about the spin cast reel, and you're also going to be learning about the casting type fishing pole. Your teacher will have one of these in the classroom to show you, and you know, she may be holding it up now. I don't know because I'm not there. But any time that you need to stop this video, please do so, so you can answer questions, or if we have to stop and get some things together, then we can proceed once the classroom is ready. Inside the kit that the teacher has, has a sheet of inventory, what's in the package, and also a little bit of how-to. Also in the package, that you can hand out is some take me fishing guides. Uh, these are just to be passed out for the students to use during this session. And we're going to be using, are going to page three and page four. Now we also have in the kit, a Spanish version, and we also have Spanish instructions as well as Spanish uh, handout sheets. So a little bit about the handout sheet. Each student should have one on the spin cast reel, and you should also have one for the casting type fishing pole. And we will go through this together. And uh, here in a minute, I will show you what you need to do and make sure everybody has a copy of the spin cast reel and the casting type rods also either you know the spanish or the english version of the take me fishing or the bamus a pascar book and um, if we also have any spanish students we have this in spanish as well uh, you will also need a pencil or something to write with so let's stop it here Okay, well, welcome back. And here we go. You should have the spin cast sheet like this. Okay, everybody see that? This is the one that we're going to work on first. And uh, I'm going to show you what the spin cast reel looks like. And then we're going to go over all the features and what the features are and what they do uh, and how you use a spin cast reel properly. So take a look at it. This is the spin cast reel. You'll notice a lot of different things. You got a little hole here with line coming out. You have something that looks like a retrieve. Um, you have a cool little button that goes back and forth on top. Um, let's see what else you got a, oh, back here, you got a button. And then it looks like you got some kind of feet. So let's go through this together. And then we will answer the questions on your sheet. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me bring it up. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm seeing. So this is the sheet that you have in front of you. Um, let me go ahead and bring up something to write with. So I'll be ready. Let's take a look at the first one that we have already done for you. And that is the button. Okay. Just before casting is when you want to push this button in 
and hold it because if you push it in and let it go, the line will just fall out. So you have to hold the line, hold it down. When you make your cast, you let the button go. And then that way the line or the lure goes flying out toward the fish. Now, I know you're probably going, well, where's the fishing pole? But we're only going through the fishing reel and then we'll go over the fishing pole. So if you look at your sheet, the line release button is A. So you would write the A right there in the space provided. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll go over every one of these so you'll be able to see and fill in the proper blank. So the next one, B, is the real handle or the retrieve. And that is this right here. So the letter B would go right here. The real handle or the retrieve allows you to, when you make a cast, you have to have some way to retrieve the line or the lure back. And that's what this handle does. And it only goes one way, one way only. But when the lure comes back to you, don't keep turning the reel because all the little gears and everything inside here are going to get messed up. Only use it to retrieve. Or if you have to replace your hook, you can let some line out. But click, bring it in. Okay? So that is the real handle or retrieve. So let's now go to the other side. And we're going to look at this little device right here. There it is. You see this? This is a very important item. This is what we call the real foot. The real foot allows us to put this and attach it to the fishing pole or the casting type fishing pole, which we will show you here in a moment. So here we want to put the letter C. The drag adjustment, which is right here, should only be played with at the beginning of a cast and when you're playing the fish. So the drag helps the line so the line will not break. So if my drag, see how I can pull this line out? I don't have the button pushed. So that means I'm working with the fish, but I can go to the plus, which makes it a little bit harder to pull out, or to the minus, where it comes out very easy. We want to be sure that we set this to the plus, all the way to the plus. We back it out just a little bit. We just want to be able to pull the line out. And what that does is if we cast out, we click, we're waiting for the fish to get the bait. If there's a big fish and he starts to run with it, and if you don't have a drag set, you could snap your line. So this is actually helping get that fish and you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Making a zingy noise. So that way, when that fish starts to run, you can hear that fish run. That would be the drag adjustment. And that is right here. So we want to put the letter D right there. So now you should have A, B, C over here on this one, D. Now we're going to the real cover, 
which is very, very important to keep a lot of the stuff out of the inside. And the real cover, you normally do only want to take this real cover off when you're doing maintenance on your reel and making sure that you know how to put it on, uh, take it off, put it back on. Uh, that's just knowing a little bit more about your reel. Or if you have to change your line out, you have to replace this because inside of here, where the line is being held is called the auger. So you don't have to really worry about that right now until you start, you know, if you purchase one of these and you go fishing a lot, you have to start replacing your line. You need to know a little bit more about on how to take it apart, how to take care of it, and how to replace the line. So you're ready to go fishing again, okay? So here, the real cover is letter E, which would be right there. Okay, so the F, or remember we talked earlier about the line opening. This is where the line comes out and goes back into your fishing or spin cast reel. So the line, this, this is also called the orifice. Can we say that together? One, two, three. Orifice. That sounded really good. Thank you. So here we want to put the line opening, which is the small opening on the spin cast reel where the line enters and exits. So that would be right there. So the last one is the handle changer. And that is right here. So some of you may be either left or right handed. So you always want to reel in with what you call your dominant hand or the, the hand that you feel more comfortable, kind of like the one that you're writing with now. So if I'm making a cast with my dominant hand, then I want to turn the crank with my dominant hand. I want to be sure that everything is in place. So if I'm a left-handed, this is set up for a right-handed fisherman. If I want to be, if I'm a left-handed fisherman, I then want to change out right there. But this should only be done by somebody that knows how it's done. And you never want to do this when you're over water. Okay, so let's put a G right there. So now take a look and make sure that everything looks like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I'm going to clear. Make sure does everybody have that? If you have to stop the video, stop it now. So you'll make sure that everybody has these answers written down. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to stop my share because I promised you on how this sits on a casting type rod. And here in a moment, we're going to start talking about the casting rod. You remember what this was called? The real foot. Okay. Here in a moment, we're going to learn about the real seat. So the real seat and the real foot work together. When you place the real foot into the real seat, then you have a device to tighten it up that we're gonna learn about. And that's how the spin cast reel fits on a casting type fishing pole. So let's stop here if you have any questions for the teachers. And then we'll get started with the next um, item, uh, which will be the fishing or the casting type rod. So you'll need to have this one ready to go or this sheet ready to go for the next section.
So you can stop it here and we'll go on to the next chapter here in a moment. Well, welcome back. So in this section, we are going to talk about the casting pipe rod. So if everybody has that out on your desk, I'm going to start my share on my screen. Let me go over here, make a couple of clicks. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Now, you should see the casting type rod. You should have the sheet. So just like before, okay, just like before, we're going to give you one. Um, so right now, let me get my pen ready. So the H, this is a two-piece type casting rod. And we're going to start here with the letter H. And this is showing you the very tip of the fishing pole. And this is the rod tip the end of the fishing pole where the line enters and exits the rod. Can you remember on the reel, what was the name of the hole on the reel where the line enters and exit? Do you remember? If you said orifice, you are correct. Way to go. You guys are amazing anglers so let's go on to the next one which are called the guides the guides on the fishing or the casting rod are where the line goes through to help it go from the reel down the rod and exits the tip so the letter i will go right here now, there's a question right next to it. Now, it says always on top or always on the bottom. And what that is meaning is when you have your fishing pole or your spin cast rock reel mounted to your casting rod, remember how we did that a while ago, okay? The eyes need to be on top because when you're making a cast, the reel or the spin cast is always the, the spin cast reel is always on top. So the eyes must always be on top. So right here, you want to place a number one because the eyes on the rod on a casting rod using a spin cast reel should always be on the top, never on the bottom for a spin cast combo. Now, J, we already talked about. J was the reel seat. Remember the reel seat? That's where we took the reel foot and we placed it into the reel seat so we can tighten it down to be a part of the combo. So if that's the real seat, then the next one is the real seat screw and cap, which is right here. And that should be the letter K. So I want to redo this again. I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to stop my share. And I want to show you again what that means. So here is a casting type rod. This is the spin cast reel. The reel foot goes into the reel seat. And the reel seat adjustment or screw locks that in place. So now the reel is a part of the rod and it won't fall off. So when we're fishing, we never want to adjust this. We never want to take this loose or tighten it. We want to thumb and we want to get it down tight, not tight enough that it's going to break, and then we are ready to fish. 
So let's go back and share and continue with that sheet. So we already had for a quick review, we have the H and let me get my drawing device back up again, kind of a quick review. We already have the H, which is the eyes or the, 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 the rod tip eyes. We have I, which is the guides. And again, when we're talking about a spin cast, on a casting type rod, always on top. We have the real seat, which was the letter J. We had the real seat screw and cap, which is called the letter right there is the K. So now we're down to this little device right there. Now, a lot of people mistake this as an eye, okay? It is not an eye. This is what we call a hook keep. So when we are done fishing or we're walking, we want to take that hook and place it in the hook keep. Now, if we don't have a hook keep, we can actually put the hook on the side of the eye, but never in the eye. Everybody understand that? Side of the eye, not in the eye. So when I'm getting ready to walk and I have my hook loose, I'm going to take my hook either down here, pushing the button so the line will come out, bring it down to the hook keep, or Put it here on the first eye, tighten it up a little bit. And then that way, when we're walking, always fishing pole straight up and down, then the hook is not swinging. I will show this to you here in a moment. We got to put the letter L right here for the hook keep. This last one is the most important item that tells you what type of fishing pole this is. When you're using a spin cast, when you're using a spin cast reel, it's mounted to a casting type rod. Now to tell what a casting type rod is, it has this device right there. Now. We normally call this a trigger, but it's really not a trigger. And I think we need to rename it to a thorn because if you're holding this not correctly, you know, it's supposed to be eyes up, you will then have a thorn in your palm of your hand. Let me show you that. But let's first complete this, the letter M. And before we stop this share, check to be sure you have all of these. But we have one more question. What is the name of this type of fishing rod? Is it a spinning, a casting rod, or a fly rod? It is, because of the thorn, it is a casting rod type rod, and you can put a number two in that location. So we have H, we have I, we have J, which is the real seat. We have K, which is the real seat screw and cap. L, the hook keeper, and then M, the thorn. Well, used to be called the trigger. We like to now say it's the thorn. So. I'm going to clear the screen. Everybody got it? One, two, three. Oop. And I will stop my share. And I'll explain a little bit more about the thorn. Here's the thorn. So again, when I'm holding 
And before I'm casting, you know, I can use my thumb or a finger of choice here. I can put my index finger here or a finger of choice, whatever I'm comfortable with. Now, what we were saying about a thorn in your palm, if I make a cast and my reel falls down and I'm holding it like this, I have a thorn in the palm of my hand. That tells you that this is not the correct way. Should always be, remember, eyes on top. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit more about the hook keep, as I promised you earlier. So I got a, another uh, combo. I put a bigger hook on there so you could actually see how this is done. When you're fishing, you only release your hook. But when you are going to move locations or you're putting your gear away, you want to secure your hook. You don't want to walk around with this, this hook swinging around. You don't want to walk around where the hook is at the very tip of your fishing pole. You know, you want to make sure it's secure. So you push your button to release the line. Then you place your hook securely in the hook keep. And then you tighten it where it's just secure. You don't want the end of your rod bend over like this. You want it nice and straight. That way now when you're holding your rod and when you're walking to your next location, it's up and down. It's not this way. It's not this way. It's not pointing to the ground. It's always straight up and down and you always walk. Now, like I said earlier, if you do not have a hook keep, you want to place it on the side of the first eye. You do not want to put it inside the eye because that will ruin the eyes. So you want to put it on the side of the eye, again, tighten it down so it looks like this. And now your hook is secure and you can now go walk or you can put it in you know, your parents' vehicle if you're leaving from a day of fishing. And there you go, okay? That is everything about the spin cast combo. Now, I hope you guys had a good time today. Uh, the sheets that you have filled out are yours. The booklets can stay on your tables, or if this is the last session and the teacher is okay with it, maybe collect the books and give them back to your teacher. So I hope this was informative and I hope you can always relate back to this on your next fishing journeys. And again, my name is Michael Shear, Program Director of Fishing Future, and I hope you have a nice day. Music.